Hi everyone, my name's Michelle and I'm Mama Loves You GB here on FlossTube, but also over on Instagram as well. Welcome along to the morning briefing. It is Sunday, May the 9th today, and uh, you might be able to tell again, I've got a bit of a different surroundings. Um, I'm back at Mum's. She had been staying with us and then needed to be back home for this weekend. So in order to sort of preserve our, our little bubble, we came back as well. Um, we were supposed to be back, we were back a couple of weeks ago, hence my, my one this week. But as you might recall, we had to have our, our vaccinations halfway through Saturday. So we didn't get to spend much time here at all. So um, this weekend we've been able to do a few more things that we wanted to get done. Um, there's, a, there's a fantastic shoe shop in Stow on the Wold, so Ness was able to get some new shoes. And obviously there's the, the framers, Cotswold Art Supplies in Stow as well. So I was able to go and chat with them about some frames and I'll show you, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, what else have I got to tell you? I've got lots to show you. My mania has started in earnest. I've got one finish, not from mania, but from, from something that I mentioned on Instagram. Um, so I'll show you that as well. Uh, in other news, the biggest news probably, Marjorie and Dave. So uh, Marjorie and Dave, they have been progressing. Marjorie has now got eight little eggs, which is a pretty big clutch for, um, for blue tits. So we shall see how many of them actually survive to, to chick them. But uh, yeah, I've got a little couple of bits of clips to show you. So I will put them in here. So yeah, I can't wait to see um, when the little chicks hatch. It shouldn't be too long um, and we should be able to see them hatching. I just thought I'd point out the picture above me. Last time I filmed here, I just put a blank wall up. Uh, Mum normally has a different picture up here, but it was really, really glary. And so last time I filmed here, I just left it completely blank. But this time what I've done is I've pinched um, the canvas that's in the kitchen normally, just for something to break it up. But also, I thought you might like to see, this is my, this is my last dog, Enzo. Um, I had a black Labrador before we had our Dalmatian. And he passed away about six years ago. Um, in fact, six, yeah, six years ago last month. Um, and that is me, when I used to have very, very long, dark hair. Um, so for most of, my, most of my life, I've actually had very, very long hair. And about three years ago, I cut it really, really short. Um, to, to just allow the grey to come through and and yeah we're getting there so there's quite a marked marked difference that wasn't my hair colour then either but um, this is more of my own colour now anyway anyway faffy faffy oh that reminds me whilst I hold it up thank you very much to everyone who left me a, a comment and told me about Paul Bunyan and uh, his blue ox called Babe which makes sense why it says hey babe on the inside so yeah thanks to everybody who let me know about that one right my first finish or my my only finish for this week and it's just a bit of silly nonsense really but I like it here we go that's my my finish so um yeah it's to do with line of duty and loads of people have um, contacted me saying that they've got into line of duty mainly because I've been banging on about it so much well the whole world has been banging on about it so much and last Sunday evening was the season six finale and the previous episode to that Ted Hastings who was is one of the main characters he's Northern Irish got a fantastic turn of phrase and one of the little things that he said was um, Jesus Mary and Joseph and the wee donkey so in honour of that and the last episode I decided that I was going to stitch a wee donkey um, and so this is from Marjorie Massey from one of the books that I showed you last week um, and I just decided to stitch the donkey so I will probably just finish him off on um, probably as a little pillow a little pillow finish so that's 32 count dirty and it is a silks for you no it isn't it's a sulky thread it's a sulky thread and the number two seconds the number is one two 
1035. So this is one of the King's Balls of Sulky, 1035. And it's sort of like a really nice, a nice kind of soft red. You might have to excuse me as well, I've got a bit of a runny nose. Uh, only for the fact that we've just had curry. Um, there is a fantastic curry house in Porton on the Water, uh, just on the main road called Alibaba's. It used to be the old co Coach and Horses, and it's amazing. So we've just had, had curry from there. So there's my little wee donkey. So hopefully I will finish him off. Ready for, well, ready for some time. Um, I've also got the three pieces that I took with me to the framers today. Because what I've decided to do is I've asked the framers to make the bespoke frames for me, but I'm actually going to mount them myself. So that's hence why I've still got the pieces, because I took the pieces along, um, picked out the frames, they measured them all up, and they will make the frames to fit. I will pin them and, um, and fit them in the frames. So you will have seen these before if you've been watching me for any length of time, but I thought I'd just show them because I've got quite a lot of new subscribers and um, it's always nice to see some past finishes. Now the one thing I haven't got here is a whiteboard, so we'll have to just see how well these things show up. So this is the first one that I've picked out um, a frame for, and this is Maria Dale. Now this was in the first, um, the first ever edition of the Antique Needlework Quarterly magazine, Sampler and Antique Needlework Quarterly magazine. Um, and you can you can still buy them um, on the secondary market or sometimes you can still buy some of the older copies from places like Annie's Catalog and things like that. But what I bought was the DVD of all of the issues. There's about 80 issues and if you're into samplers, it's a phenomenal resource. So she's in the first, the first issue. So this is stitched on a piece of 32 count old stationery by Seraphim and it's actually stitched in a very dark bluey green and it says there if the spring put forth no blossom in summer there will be no beauty and in autumn no fruit if youth be idle maturer years will be miserable so and I've actually chosen for this one I was really unsure about what to pick for these um, hence why I wanted to actually take them into a framers rather than trying to pick something out online and I've actually gone for quite a, a sort of a mid brown for this one. I thought I wanted maybe a darker one but every time I put a darker frame next to it it didn't really lift the blue green it just looked very very dour and very black um, which don't get me wrong I quite like sometimes but for this one I just wanted it to be lifted a little bit so it's kind of like a, a mid brown and I think from memory it's got little uh, gold bead on the inside so there's that one that I should be having a frame for. This one is also one that I wanted to take and just sort of hold some frames up against it because it's not the sort of colours that I would normally um, normally stitch with. So this is again by Seraphim Fabrics and I have to put the name across the, across the bottom unless it's written on it anywhere. Sometimes it is. No, I have to put the name across the bottom of what it is. It's a 36 count and this is Ada Bilson by Wild Slurry Snaps. And this was chart was gifted to me by a lovely stitchy friend. And this one I've gone for, it's not black, but it's a darker, it's a grey. And again, it's got a little bit of a gold bead to it. Um, typically it's quite an expensive frame but it was the only one that really suited it. Um, it was a really hard hard colour palette I felt to to pick a frame for um, that, I, that I liked. Because um, as I go to the framers and I can imagine all of these things on the wall and when you see like Brenda's walls and um, Kitten Stitches walls, every, they're these nice um, frames they're all different but they all look lovely together like Carol Sockbox Stitches um, sample walls as well and I always fall into the trap of picking something too similar so when I go and I bring it home I'm really happy that I look at it I think oh, it looks the same as all the other frames I've got so I was trying to really pick out something that was coordinating but but different if that makes any sense at all 
And then the last one that I got a frame for was this one, Mary Catherine Harris, which is charted by Erna Hiscock. And I know that there is a sale going on um, for this one at the moment, and I'll put the name uh, across the bottom. There's lots of people actually who are stitching it, who've picked some really, really interesting fabric colours for this to go on. So um, I'll put the name of the sale down in the, um, on the bottom of the screen and then you can have a look and see what, what other people are doing. So I've been helping Erna to get this chart out and about to people. And it seems um, the last few people that have contacted me for the chart, when they've paid Erna, she's actually sent the chart through. So I think that her internet situation must have improved a little bit. So um, feel free to contact me if you, if you can't get hold of her. But um, I think for the most part, she is back up and running with this chart. But as I said, if you have trouble, then, um, then let me know and I can help you out with that one. So those are the ones that I have had framed. They're running a little bit behind, so I'm probably not going to get the frames for those until the end of May. So um, yeah, then it'll take me a little while to pin them and to get them ready. And I shall show you as soon as they're ready. Right, mania, mania. I've been really bad at putting anything of my mania on Instagram, mainly because every time I go to, the light's really poor and I can't get a decent photograph or it's so crumpled because of the way I stitch in hand that it's just, I haven't ironed it and you can't see anything. So, so yeah, I haven't really posted very much. So the first one that I started on the first weekend in May, was my first mania start but it was also for the Blackbird Designs weekend stitch along which um, Brenda and Laura have been have been talking about so I started along with Nikki Noodles from Nikki Noodles Stitching um, this one at the top the B Skep by um, it's part of the Agnes Platt strawberry sampler book so this is a lovely book from Blackbird it's got three things in it so it's got the main sampler there which is a picture of the original and then this smaller sampler and this pin cushion have been sort of inspired by this. So yeah, I'm stitching this one and so is Nikki Noodles and so is quite a few other people actually. Um, I've seen a lot of people saying that they've, they've started this one. Um, right, where have I put it? There it is. So I haven't got a massive start on this one, mainly because I was too busy watching Line of Duty and stitching my donkey. Um, just faffing around with other things really. It's been a real faffy week. So there is my my start. It is on 36 count pale parchment by Victoria Motto that I've had for a while and as you can see I've got a good start build in the house and the flower pot. I've got the border in. The border's simple except for here and here. And there's two extra stitches here and here. But other than that, it's fine. Although I did have to pick out a little bit. Not because of that, I clocked that on the chart, it was because I couldn't count further up here. Um, but that's my start. I'm stitching it in all the called for colors, except for the country redwood which I haven't been able to get hold of. So I have substituted it for one of my Victoria mottos that I had, I've had for a long time. And then there's my little bit of a floss keep as well, which is the Bees Get House, which I made. And I've got a tutorial on my channel if you wanna go and see how to make the, uh, the little thread keeps. They're so, so easy to make. Um, so go and pop along and have a look. You can buy all the supplies you need from Amazon or any other outlet of its type. So that was my first one. And for those of you who don't know, I am starting 12 samplers and my plan, or, or sampler-like things, and my plan is that each one of them is then assigned to a month and I will then finish it during that month of the year. 
because what I didn't want to do was just go and start loads and loads of other things and then they were just kind of in the ether somewhere. So this one is actually assigned to the month of May. So I'm hoping to get that one finished by the end of May. Now the next thing I started was, where is it? Where is it? This one. random threads in there it's by sheepish designs and it's called hedgehog sampler and it is charted in dmc and so those are the colors that i've pulled but i have switched of the colors that i've used so far i have added in a victorian motto which is very very similar color to what the DMC would have been, just, just for a little bit of variegation. So if I've got something that I think will sub in and just give me a little bit of variegation, then I'll add it in. But other than that, I'm just using the, the DMC. And so this is a really, really lovely stitch. It's mostly cross stitch. There are a few, are there lazy daisies in this one? No, uh, there's some areas of satin stitch and then there's a few uh, queen stitches in this border here. I've never done queen stitch before, so that's going to be interesting. Um, some French knots and a buttonhole bar. Where's the buttonhole bar? Don't know. I'll find it. I'll find it. Um, and so I started this on a piece of 32 count granite by... Zweiger. And this is my start. And it's too dark. I think it's too dark. You can see it. But that's about it. You can see it. It's, but it's not, I don't think it's doing any favours particularly. I know this border is going to brighten up a bit because it's going to have the pink satin stitch in it. And most of the alphabets are in this brighter colour. So what I did was I have actually ordered a piece of the call for, which is summer khaki in 32 count as well. And you can tell I'm at home because I've managed to get my mum to serge all my fabrics for me, <laughs> which is amazing. And so I think you'll be able to tell, sorry, just wave this in your face, that that is going to be a much better fabric it's going to lend itself to more of those those colors I love the way the colors look on this fabric but they don't stand out quite so well when they're not so dense from doing the floss toss so I think they're going to be better on this fabric and this fabric is showing itself a little bit lighter than it actually is so it's still it's still a bit darker so this is, what did I say, it was summer khaki, and this is granite. This one's a linen. Well, they're both linens, I think. They're both linens. So I shall be restarting that one. I only had one day or one evening in the, the bit that I've decided to shelve. So it's not, to, all is not lost. And that will be, my project for September. So whatever doesn't get finished this month, I'll pick it up in September. And then because I was in a bit of a palaver, um, I don't like it when fabrics I, I pick don't work out. I, I, it gets me all in a bit of a, hence why I was looking around to see, right, who can give me a piece of summer khaki tomorrow? And Patchwork Rabbit, I was like, right, they've got it. And they did tomorrow. That the following day, I had my piece of um, my piece of summer khaki. If I've, if I've made a mistake with fabric, I need to get it sorted straight away. Impatient, impatient, some would say. So the next thing I started was this, which is stars by the drawn thread. Now there are two versions of this chart. There's the first version, which is on the front cover 
which has got the alphabet at the top and then it's got a verse underneath. Or, and this is the one that I'm going to do, on the back, let's see if I can show you without the glare. There we go. On the back is the second verse version, which has actually got the first part of the verse at the top. So the full thing says, Age is, opportuni age is opportunity no less than youth itself, though in another dress. As the evening twilight fades away, the sky is filled with stars invisible by day. So I liked that. If you're doing the alphabet version, then you just replace the top, the top part of the verse with the alphabet and then you just have the second part. But I like the two parts together. And I bought this kit from Chris from the, the Nimble Thimble. If you haven't checked out her website, then uh, please do. And it came with the Cool 4 fabric, which is dark cobblestone on 32 count. It came with the little buttons that it's called with. And it comes with all the called for flosses, which are silks. So a mixture of Dinky dies, needlepoint inks, and thread gatherers. So this is how they come. And I don't know if you saw on a previous video, I had finished the Drawn Threads Welcome Spring, which I also got from Chris at the Nimble Thimble, and I had loads and loads of thread left over. Because even on 32 count, with the silk, you only need one strand. So that one at the bottom, I don't know if you, how well you can see it, that one at the bottom is glorious. So this is my start. I was inspired but to do this one by um, April, May, June Stitcher who had finished it and she had such a lovely frame for hers. It really, sorry I've got to put this back otherwise I will lose it all. Um, she had such a beautiful frame for hers that it just made it look absolutely gorgeous. So I haven't really got very far on this one because this one has only got one very short evening in it which had some marking in it as well so I've literally got the sky is stars the sky is stars in <laughs> so I did a middle star on this one just because I wasn't quite sure where it would where it would sit on the fabric and I couldn't be bothered to measure it I knew the fabric was big enough I just couldn't be bothered to work it out and measure it which hold that thought <laughs> so the next thing that I started I'm absolutely obsessed with I'm absolutely obsessed with um, and this is good because it's my it's my stitch for June so as soon as May is finished this is the first thing that I am going to get to work on to finish off so these are the threads Ooh, what a rat's nest that is um, these are the threads Again, pretty much the call for. There's the odd Victorian motto in there, but pretty much the call for. And there's some DMC in the bottom of the bag as well. Um, and this is on a piece of 36 count fabric that I dyed myself. But what is it? It is called Heaven Above by Midsummer Night's Designs. And this is from 2007. So, I don't know how well you can see that because it's one of the ones that's got the actual photograph on the bottom. And so it says on there, There is a land of pure delight where saints immortal reign. Eternal day excludes the night and pleasures banish pain. Their everlasting spring abides and never fading flowers. Death like a narrow sea divides this heavenly land from ours. And so this is where... I am. So remember that thought where I know the fabric's big enough because I measured it when I dyed it, especially for this project a long time ago. And then I couldn't be bothered to measure it where I started and I decided to start in the bottom left. Mainly because I wanted to get a start on the words because they don't have that much of the dungarees which is the call for thread and I just wanted to see, make sure it was right before I ordered some more. So there's my start. 
So I started too far over here because I couldn't, I couldn't measure it. I just, oh, that will do. That's about right. And so this side, again, it seems I have a penchant for not cutting my fabric too straight, but it fits. So I've got about an inch, about an inch gap there, which is fine because I'm going to pin this one myself. So I'll frame this one myself. So for those of you who maybe aren't um, aren't as familiar, let's just talk about framing just for a second. So let's go back to this one, Ada Bilson. So very often when you have things professionally framed, what they should do is either pin or lace. A lot of places do um, lacing. Some places do pinning. I know um, Total Framing in the States pins, for example. So effectively, what you're going to do is you're going to take this piece of fabric and you're going to wrap it around a board. And if you're going to lace it, what you need to be doing is lacing it so that the tension is away from the front of your fabric. So you wouldn't want to lace this close up because you would see the sort of pucker marks. So what you need to do is to have enough space to lace far enough away from your fabric that the tension on the lacing appears even on the front. And you need a bit of extra fabric to do that with. If you're gonna pin, you can get away with a little bit less because by the very nature of pinning, when I fold this over, leaving a little gap, I have to pin into my foam core board here. And I can put as many pins in as I need so that it doesn't look puckered. It's my own fault that I didn't leave a bit more room. I had always always planned to frame this one myself anyway. It's a bit it's my own fault that I didn't leave a bit more room, but it won't make a difference on this piece. But if you want to get it professionally framed, that's why people talk about leaving margins of three inches, two inches, and if you start to get a bit less than that, than one and a half really, it can cause some problems. So you can see the sort of the tension of the, the fabric on the front. So I can't wait to get back to this one. There's so many lovely colours in it. And it's such a joy, such a joy to stitch on. So I'm gonna do a couple more, maybe another night on this one. I might stitch on this one tonight when I finish filming. And then I will probably have another couple of days on stars. Uh, because I've got 12 starts, in May I've realistically got two or three nights on each one, or two or three days on each one, depending on how far I how far I want to go with it. I might just do one. It depends. Waffle. A lot of waffle. Excuse me. I'm just going to... A nice little doggy mug there. So we've got the black Labrador. And then the... What's black Labrador on there as well? Must be the other one. We've got another mug with a Dalmatian on it. I like to keep it fair. My mum's got a cockapoo as well. So I don't know if you... I'm surprised you haven't heard him. He has a penchant for barking. Literally a mouse could fart and he'll bark. So, um... I'm quite surprised he hasn't started. Right, so for the rest of the uh, the rest of this edition, I have got some freebies to show you, all from one place. I have got a little bit of haul, although I did say I was trying to be good. I did have a parcel from Russia, and I did happen to see an advert from Patchwork Rabbit, which needed my immediate attention. Um, so uh, I did put about it on my Instagram stories and I had a couple of people reply to me saying, we forgive you, we forgive you, we know what it's like, we know what it's like. So, um, and plans, plans really just to carry on with my mania. Um, I did look and see what my whip go was for this month. It just seems really whip go for me is what two projects am I going to absolutely ignore <laughs> this month? Oh dear, I never had myself knocked down as quite such an obstinate person, even to myself. So I always knew that if I 
Whipco could be a little bit dangerous for me because if there was something that I had to stitch on that month or that I should be stitching on that month, it could be touch and go as to whether I would fancy it or not because I am a bit of a stitch what I want when I want. But I went with it and literally I think I've done two days on one of my projects that I'd said for Whipco and that's I found out about my character that I appear to be the most obstinate <laughs> stitcher going even to myself even to myself so um yeah talk about shoot yourself in the foot but there we go right freebies so I have to reach and slide sorry about that I realized I had something in my eye just as I was moving my projects around to show you my things around to show you so I started rubbing my eye and then I suddenly thought there might be people who really don't like other folks rubbing their eyes on camera so um I just shut it off for a minute there right my three freebies all come from the same company and I don't think I've ever brought you a freebie from them before um, and the reason that I chose these freebies is because I had an email from them um, and they were doing a 10% off on their, their chart. So I thought, oh, I'll go and have a quick look because I have bought a chart myself from them before. I thought, I'll go and have a quick look and see if there's anything else I fancy, you know, 10% code, not supposed to be buying anything, but oh, I'll just have a check, you know, just a check. And um, so, yeah, they had these, they had these freebies. They, it's Tempting Tangles and I'll put their website details up um, with the freebies. I think the 10% discount code lasts until the 9th of May. So if you're watching this on the 9th of May, Sunday the 9th of May, if you were quick, you might just be able to get in with the 10% the discount. So I've picked out the three freebies. Um, and I'll explain why in a minute. The first one is this one. It's called a pan Panoply of Posies. Um, a biscornu. Now I've never made a biscornu. I really, really want to have a go at making a biscornu. And I've got one of those lovely um, biscor nests to do with the cardinal. Um, if you've ever watched Amy Loves Toad, she's done um, a biscor nest and she's making another one at the minute. Um, but I've never done a biscornu. So this one, that's the design there. And you do have this chart on the second page. So you don't have to work it you don't have to work it out how to do it. So that would be the Biscornu. And then there is part of the chart there, um, which is obviously just one quarter of it. So if you wanted to do something else, you could. And the thing that struck me about that is that would make a nice strawberry. Because that's roughly the sort of shape that a lot of the patterns that get made into strawberries are, either like a half circle or just slightly less than a half circle. So I think that would make a really nice strawberry, just that, that one little bit if you fancied it. So you could make a, a biscornu and a strawberry from there. And then the next two are kind of the same design with a bit of a difference. So I'm just gonna hide the chart, even though it's a freebie, but I want you to be able to go and go there. So this is the first one, it says diligence is the mother of good luck. So you could pick this out as a St Patrick's Day freebie, you could change the colours, you could make it into like one of your stitching um, designs, little pillows, something like that. So you've got um, a needle and a thread, and you've got your shamrocks, all sorts of things there. And then this one is the same chart almost but it's designed more for somebody who is maybe taking exams or has passed exams and this one sort of struck out to me just because of I know what my A-level students are going through at the moment um, and some people might think oh you know because they've not got full exams like every other year this year is going to be easier than than previous years but these students have had so much stress. They've had so much stress. My year 13s missed most of year 12 or a good disruption to year 12. They've missed this year. They've It's been late coming, knowing what exactly how they were going to be assessed and everything. And I, I don't want them going away feeling that they're, they've had any the less, they deserve the grades any the less than, than other years. Um, because that's not true. It's just been different for them, but it's not that they deserve it any the less. 
So um, that just made me think of anybody who was going through exams or um, getting their results. You know, diligence is the mother of good luck. The, you know, they haven't got their grades by, they've not been handed to them on a plate, they've still worked for them. So, um, so yeah, that just struck out to me this, this week. So anyway, I will put the information down below so you can go and grab those should you wish. Okie dokie, haul. The first one I'm gonna do. Now, the lovely Anita from Northumberland Sample House just about broke Etsy last week because she had dyed some fabrics. And I was lucky enough to get one and I got 35, oops, 35 count coffee. I think it was um, Trixie Tricycle. Tricycle Trixie? She was saying on her first video, she said, I haven't got hands for floss tube. She said, I've got hands for doing things outside, but not hands for floss tube. Mine are a bit the same. My little claws. So, if you haven't watched her, go and watch her. She's funny. Nice projects. Definitely good floss tuber. So, stop faffing, Michelle. Show the fabric. Show the fabric. So this is my 35 count coffee. And it came already surged. And there is such a nice thing about having a fabric where the edges are sewn. I never thought it really mattered too much to me. But then when you have it, it's so much nicer to sew on rather than catching like the ends every time you try and stitch, especially like me if you stitch in hand. So there is my 35 count coffee. Beautifully dyed beautifully presented came in a little box lovely and I know she's been putting them up um, I think she's put up two or three other lots this week so if you've missed if you've missed out make sure that you favorite the shop Northumberland Sampler House um, because I think they're North Sampler House actually on um, on Etsy because then you'll get notified when she posts new things and also go on to her Instagram for Northumberland Sample House because she normally announces a couple of days in advance when she's going to be putting new fabric onto her Etsy so you can be there ready with your finger on the button. I'm going to save my big haul till last. My next thing, I'll just show you these quickly. One of the things that we like to do when we come to Mum's is just have a little a little trip around the charity shops. Um, living in the Cotswolds as she does, you tend to get quite a good class of charity shop around here and usually do quite well. I managed to pick up a couple of frames today. Um, so I picked up these two. I don't like obviously what's in them. What's in them will come out very, very quickly, but a pair of nice long, thin frames like that, or like that, two pound each. Yes, please, I'll take those. Always worth looking in charity shops for frames. And then this was the thing that I fell for from Patchwork Rabbit and this is um, a collection of red samplers from JBW Designs. So this is them and then I'll show you on the back because you can see you can see them in a bit more a bit more detail. And it's not a booklet. I had a, I had visions of it being a booklet, but it's not. It's a card outer casing. And then the charts are on five individual um, sheets. Now, the only thing that I would say about them is that some of them are pretty small. Um, I don't think it would give me a, a problem, but I know some people like to have a slightly larger chart to work with and so some people I think will probably want to enlarge these. Um, so if I can just show you a very small corner without showing you too much of the of the design. Sky hooks, okay. Let's do it like that. So that is the size of the chart for one of them 
and that one is 166 by 171 so that's a, quite a big one and one of the other samplers the size of the chart is like that and then the one of the others is slightly bigger so I think you can see from there that it's a lovely collection of samplers but the charts are a little bit on the small side so just bear that in mind if you get them that you might want to enlarge them a little bit okie dokie my last bit of haul now I ordered these uh, on the 16th of April the 16th of April and they came in the other day so what are we on now it's 9th of May I got these middle of last week so maybe the 5th or 6th of May they came in so about three weeks three four weeks they took um, and these are Barbara Anna designs from Nick and Moscow so I have three safety in numbers traveling all the way in the post by themselves you can't have that you can't have one traveling on its own so I'm going to show you them I haven't even really opened them myself other than just to sort of have a peek inside the tube so I bought Miss Tea Miss Coffee and the Four Seasons the Four Seasons is the most recent one so it comes in a tube everything's in the tube and it's a full kit you can't get these designs any other way at the moment and I'm just going to show you this first one how it comes there we go so that's the chart so it's an A3 single page chart for this one here is the fabric so it's like um, a natural colour fabric. I'm not sure if it actually tells me what the fabric is. I know it says Zweigart because I think that's one of the reasons why the kits were slightly delayed because she was waiting on Zweigart. So it looks like, yeah, just like a natural, a natural Zweigart. Whether I'll do it on that, I don't know. I might swap it out. And then this is floss so all the MC floss nicely braided and on a stitch card there with excuse me itchy nose with the numbers on it as well the numbers on the chart you've only got these numbers it doesn't give you the corresponding DMC number that I can see straight away so if you were picking up one of these charts on the secondary market from somebody who'd already stitched it, then you would be needing to, to match your DMC threads. But that's not too hard. So there's that one. Um, I'm not going to open the Miss Coffee one because it will be very, very similar because they were sort of a pair of designs. And then I will have a look at this one because this is the... Four Seasons one, sorry, in case you haven't seen, that's the Four Seasons. So the way I got these was I went on to Nick Camosco's Instagram and I actually sent a message to her to say that I was interested in buying these charts um, and then they were out of stock they were, so she directed me I'm sure that there was a website involved so she directed me to the website they were out of stock um, and so I literally left my um, email details with her and then she emailed me when when everything came back into stock so this is the four seasons one so this time you've got two a3 size charts so one sits there one sits there so you've got two on each chart same piece of fabric now this time it's a long thin 
piece of fabric. You get two needles as well with each one. So this is the long, thin cut of fabric. I suddenly realised you can't see me at all. Ooh. So that's the long, thin cut of fabric. So they would go next to each other on the fabric. And then, obviously, because you've got four of them, you've got a little bit of... Uh, more of a colourways there. And again, they're numbered one to 15. Now I'm just checking on here to see whether it says, whether they are definitely DMC. I think they were, but I can't actually see anywhere where it definitely says DMC. So yeah, they might not be DMC threads, but they are really, really nice threads, um, all the same. So I am super excited to start on those. So that is going to be, whoops, that is going to be June taken care of. There's no way that I'm going to be able to leave those much longer than June. Um, one of them is going to have to be started. So if you've got any strong feelings, put in the comment box below which one you think I should make a start on. Let me just check my book just to see where I am. Right, two other little things just to mention. Um, I had a message from Paola from Pantini Pantini and she has sent me some um, some extra goodies in the post so I'm looking forward to getting those. They were supposed to be delivered on Friday but we had to leave before the, um, the delivery driver arrived so um, I'm hoping that they will be waiting for me when I get home that they haven't been taken back to the, um, the sourcing office but um, yeah so I'll show you those next week. So some new things from Pantini Pantini and the other thing that I have still got to do that I promised I would do is um, I had a stitching lamp from a company called Ben Q to review and I still haven't done my review so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a separate little video which is going to be a review of the lamp but also a little bit of how I stitch because I quite often get questions about how I stitch um, I, I stitch in hand I hold my fabric and, and curl my fabric up I leave my pattern on the side just to look at but I know a lot of people have asked me before about how I actually stitch and whether I could do just a little video showing that so the lamp is in my stitchy spot um, so I think I'll put those two things together and do a separate shorter video just about how I stitch and a review of this this lamp which is excellent but that's it from me so it will be back to my normal place next week hopefully with a few more goodies to show you and a bit more progress on my mania plans let me know down below how you're getting on with your your mania um i love looking at other people's projects it's it's my absolute downfall and if i spent as much time doing my own projects as looking at other people's projects i'd be much further along the line but uh, until next week stay classy stitches 